We were promised a Biden landslide and Democrats were supposed to pick up House seats. But that didn't happen. And we're back, Mike Cernovich. Cernovich.com. Checking out them House races. Have you been watching the House races? Pretty mind-blowing. This is something not really getting covered, but something that I think is interesting and worth discussing more. Right now, the Associated Press has it at 215 for the Democrats and 194, 196 for Republicans, and and you need 218 to have a majority. But I'm going through a number of the races that are clearly going to be Republican, right? Clearly going to be Republican, but the AP doesn't want to call those. That brings up that brings up two issues then. So one is that, one is that you're watching a narrative form in real time, right? What, what's my gut reaction to the presidential election? Go watch 50 other videos I did, dude. What? Go to hell. Go watch 50 other videos I did. Don't just jump in when I'm talking about something else. Entitlement. So the, the narrative has to coalesce around the idea that the Biden win is some sort of huge mandate, right? It's like a huge mandate, a Biden win, but the Democrats are barely going to keep a House majority. They were supposed to gain seats, remember? Democrats were supposed to, to pick up House seats. That's what we we're told. The narrative was, you know, the orange man is bad. The orange man has been bad for so many years. Blah, 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 blah. The Democrats are going to pick up House seats and... Trump is going to lose to Biden in the landslide. And, and if they actually called those races, if the AP actually called those races, then the, that narrative would go away, right? That narrative of a Biden mandate, of a blue wave, of a changing time of the country is gone. Now what you can see is that they don't want to call these races, Right? I don't care that Esper was fired. I don't understand you people. Do you know how to read a subject? Do you know how to read a subject? What does the subject say? What does the title of this Periscope say? Does it say I care about Esper? Does it say I'm going to talk about the Trump elections for 50,000th time? Does it say any of that? Right? Does it say any of that? So you want to get blocked? You can get blocked. That's not what we're talking about right now. What we're talking about is how right now the GOP will we'll probably follow this more closely than I am. Will Chamberlain in the House. We were supposed to have a House supermajority, right? There was supposed to be a House supermajority. There was supposed to be a Biden landslide. The polls this, the polls that. And the reason I feel so inspired, the reason I feel so optimistic for my country the reason I feel that the future is now is the media went nuclear for four years. They've gone nuclear on me. Every now and then I go, I wonder if people really believe this stuff they read about me, that I'm some kind of like evil guy. And No, they don't. They don't. Otherwise, House Democrats would have a supermajority. House Democrat leadership is actually in a scramble. People thought AOC was going to be Speaker of the House, right? Not literally, but... Th that was the idea. The vibe was the squad is it because everybody watches the news. And if you watch the news, you think the country is far left. The country is not far left. The country is culturally conservative. Trump without COVID would have won in a landslide. Trump without COVID would have won in a landslide. Trump, if he had handled COVID better, as I and some others had told him to, would have won in a landslide. Trump, if he hadn't blown that first debate, would have won. Even with the things you were saying, you guys are saying cheating, fraud, and everything. I'm not here to argue about that. I'm just saying the numbers as they are, call it a cheat, call it what you want. I'm not here to talk about that. Trump has a better first de debate performance. He wins. Trump doesn't have to deal with the COVID crisis. He wins in a landslide. Trump handles COVID better. He wins in a landslide. Trump was the only world leader to lose approval during COVID. And it was a COVID was for Trump handmade from God for him. Hey, bro, 
You want to go after China. You want to talk about the need for keeping supply chains domestic. You want to talk about the dangers of globalism. Here you go, bro. An epidemic from China. Boom. Boom. So Trump, Trump, you, you can say there's a saying that, have you, have you guys ever heard this saying? Tell me if you had or not. And then tell me what it means. Tell me what you think this means. Victory has 1,000 masters. Defeat has but one. I'll say that again. Victory has 1,000 masters. Defeat has but one. There's two ways to interpret that. Literally, you would say, well, it takes a, a village to win. That's the literal interpretation. That's not the way it's intended, though. The way it's intended is that when, yeah, 1,000 fathers. The way it's interpreted is that when you, when you win, everybody claims the win. When you lose, nobody claims the defeat, right? That's the way that that's the way it's intended to be used, right? That that's how it's intended to be used, which is when Trump won, everybody's like, oh boy, we're there. Trump loses. Well, that's just Trump. Trump, if he had won, he would have won through sheer force of will, five rallies a day leading into the election. But if he lost, it was his. So this is the rare case where victory or defeat rested on, on one man, and that was Trump. The bigger picture, though, is that Joe Biden is widely seen as a centrist. You might not. That's the problem. Too many MAGA people are in the equivalent of the TDS bubble. Joe Biden is a far left wing extremist who sniffs kids. That's not how the country sees him. That's not how the country sees Joe Biden as a centrist. And if you actually if you're actually logical, Joe Biden is a centrist center left. But he's within the bell curve of acceptable behavior. You got the squad on the left, which hates Israel, anti-Semitic strain, wants full-on socialism, wants communism, essentially. They want gulags. And then you have the far right, which what's the far right? There aren't anybody in the far right. I'm supposedly far right. Okay, I want immigrants who have high IQs to come to America, but apparently that means I'm closed border. I want a cream skim from the rest of the world. So far right, far right is I want people, more people like Naval to come from India and other countries, but that apparently may, means they don't like immigration, right? So there's no real, there's no real far right because I'm, I'm far right, far right extremist. Okay, so I support guns, freedom of speech, high IQ immigrants. That's, that's far right these days, Right. That's that's the far right. The far left is they hate Israel. They 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 claim that American army rangers. Remember, um, Ilhan Omar called army rangers. Ilhan Omar called army rangers terrorists. Right? Remember that because they were doing peacekeeping missions in Somalia. So for me, the the, the far left is actually extreme. The far right is actually center right. I'm pretty basic bitch, people. Pretty fucking boring, if you ask me. And, yeah, so people like this, Cernovich got a PJ from Smokey Joe. You're just what I call the low IQ right. You're just dumb. So a number of people, I had 10,000 people and follow me, by the way, because I said that I don't think that um, these cases are going to be enough to switch the election, right? 10,000 people and follow me. You can go to Social Blade. Unbelievable, right? I always see these boomers on Twitter, lost 100 followers. I'm like, what's just a bot purge? I'm, I'm okay with losing 10, and that's not only that, but I've lost multiple times, at least five times I've lost at least 10,000 followers with a single tweet. One time I said I supported Islam. And, I, and what people don't understand is, if I tweet out that I support Islam and I love my Muslim friends, and you unfollow me for that, whew, thank God, because you're one of those weirdos who are going to do God knows what, and I don't want you anywhere near me. If I lose 10,000 followers because I give what is the right answer about what's going to happen with these court cases, or what I mean by the low IQ right. The low IQ right is that you're saying, people are going, you demanded that Trump get a concession. I didn't demand, I don't think Trump could concede shit until December 13th. Al Gore didn't concede until December 13th. The election that year was November 8th, so maybe there's four days. Wake me up if it's Thanksgiving and Trump hasn't conceded, right? But the low IQ right goes, Cernovich doesn't think these court cases are going to change the election results. Therefore, he's saying Trump can concede. 
then you're just your low IQ. You don't know anything. You're not smart enough to read me. You don't deserve to read me. Just like, for example, I like to talk about things. Other, uh, you know, a good friend of mine, Nestor, when he went to Arizona, he goes, when do you decide to periscope? Because it's objectively true that if you want to be successful in punditry, do not do what I do. You need to have a regular scheduled show, regular scheduled content, same time, same place, every day, with discipline, five days a week. You do it like Scott Adams does it. He's, Scott Adams is one of the most structured, disciplined men alive. And that's why he crushes. So you, if, you, if you're actually trying to model behavior, don't model my behavior. Model Scott Adams' behavior. And I don't say that like with a forked tongue. I mean, literally, you should. I've recommended this book 100 times. That's not where I'm like throwing shade, but I'm like, D -d -d -d, you know, with the whatever. No. But a friend of mine said, when do you decide to Periscope? And I go, well, I, I'm, I like to talk about what other people aren't talking about. Right now, I think it's interesting that the House is barely going to keep a majority, right? The D House Dems are barely going to keep a majority when they were expecting some kind of crazy supermajority. That, to me, is interesting. That, to me, is what nobody else is talking about. That, to me, is what the media, more importantly, doesn't want you to hear. NY22, uh, NY, NY22, that race is over, but they won't call it. Just like the media won't call Alaska, they won't call North Carolina, or at least they haven't. Because the narrative is what? Well, the narrative is a mess now. The, the true narrative, because the narrative doesn't always mean a false narrative. The true narrative is that this was a nail-biter election, as I said it would be. The true narrative is that this was a close race. The true narrative is that the country rejected far left-wing extremism. The true narrative is that the country rejected CNN, Maddow, and the fake news media. The true narrative is that the country sided with what is considered a moderate center leftist, Joe Biden, and they rejected multiple extreme left-wing people. They rejected, remember Mitch McConnell was going to lose the seat, right? That you want to become good at punditry, just have a memory that's beyond the goldfishes. I'm old enough to remember, I'm old enough to remember that they put $100 million into Kentucky because they're going to unseat Mitch McConnell. That didn't happen. Left-wing extremism was rejected. The fake news media narratives were rejected. So it's interesting, folks. 2022, 20, yeah, Portland even elected Wheeler over the Antifa candidate. Exactly. America remains a centrist country, culturally conservative. 2022, baby. 2022, baby.